Today we are replacing an exhaust valve that I think is bent on a Honda overhead cam 160 G. Get the motor off the base. You're going to take one, two, three, four bolts out from the underneath portion, and then one, two, three four bolts out from the upper portion and then there are some pry marks here and here to pry the motor apart keeping in mind that oil will be leaking out while you're doing this now because this is a series of short videos you're going to have fade in and fade out in between my each video but one thing I want to point out is that as you're taking the case off make sure you use some emery cloth on this shaft here because the case will stick right here trying to come apart in two once you get the motor apart maybe just hit this little area right here again with some more emery cloth and then i like to clean the inside of these areas with brake clean because it dries fast you can use soap and water if you want to and once you're at this stage you are going to remove this thrust washer. That's going to give you the opportunity to take this timing belt off. And then you are going to remove this cam retaining pin. Before you do that though, make sure this cotter pin area is facing this way towards the motor. This is the top dead center for the engine, which you're going to reassemble and it's going to be part of the timing belt aligning system. In addition, you will notice on the timing cam itself, there are two little marks. There's one mark there, one mark there, and one mark there. Those are cam aligning points, which you're going to use to realign the cam back with the crankshaft on reassembly. Once you get the cam retaining pin out, keeping in mind that this groove the raised edge is going to be facing towards this gear for the crankshaft when it when it goes back together. We have that out of the way. You can lower the belt, take the cam gear out, take the belt out. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've checked my new um, timing belt. I would go ahead and since you're in there, replace this so it doesn't. Uh, so you don't have to go back in there and take it apart again later. Check the belts, make sure they match. Then our next step is going to be to remove the crankshaft to be able to get to the bad exhaust valve, or what I think is a bent exhaust valve. And in doing so, we are going to have to remove the flywheel. And that is going to be done with removal of this bolt. Take the flywheel off and we're gonna see what's behind that. So in this next part, we talked about removing this. I had a tough time trying to get this off. I actually had to go rent a puller which clamps onto these. You really need a two-arm puller. This clamps onto here and it's going to push on this bolt and pull this off of the crankshaft. Uh, this being a 19 millimeter bolt. Uh, once this pops off, it's gonna. It was kind of a loud pop. It kind of surprised me. But once that pops off with the puller, you can at that point get this crankshaft out. But you're going to uh, take the bolt off to get this to get this. Uh, this flywheel off and you're going to put this bolt back on just enough for maybe about four or five threads and you're going to run that puller on here and you may even have to tap on it preferably with a hammer um, something like this with a nylon end on it and then when this eventually comes off you will at that point be able to get to this crankshaft uh, this crankshaft sh will slide out, but before you do that, 
you are going to take the uh, the rod cap bolts off. I would go ahead and mark the cap here and here so you know which the top is. Okay, I put a little black mark here. Uh, you're going to take this cap off. At that point, you're going to rotate um, you're going to rotate the crankshaft um, around and then you're going to push that piston back into the cylinder so it reaches top dead center and also it's going to clear this rod end. Once you do that, you can take this crankshaft out like so and then you will move, remove the piston and that is going to expose the valve in question which we're going to take out now once you get to that stage you can take a look in there inspect it and then you are going to come over here and you are going to remove this outer portion here here with a pin that just pulls out and it kind of sounds crazy and that's going to take this cam lever off and then that's going to expose the valve spring. This basically pushes in and just releases. And then you can press the valve through the back out of the hole and remove the valve. If for some reason it's stuck, you may have to tap on the valve end with a little hammer. Once you get that valve out, you're going to expect, inspect the valve, which is this one, exhaust valve. I didn't notice anything bent on it but I did buy a new valve. Uh, it's a replacement valve, it's not an OEM, but it's all they had. And you are going to fit this in the valve groove to make sure that it fits real well. What I have also done is gone in there and used some emery cloth. Um, you've basically rolled up like this and just try to clean um, that hole up a little bit and I've also um, put some memory cloth on the end of the screwdriver and came in this way and cleaned up that valve seat a little bit as well and that new valve should move pretty smooth pretty freely in and out of that valve stem hole here if not you'll need to try to clean it up a little bit more with memory cloth. once you get the valve back into place Make sure to oil that valve before you put it in. You're also going to oil the seal. And then you're going to assemble this back here. Put the pin back in place. And then you are going to assemble your piston. In doing so, make sure you oil the piston really well. And you also want to make sure that these compression gaps are offset. I have one uh, set here. 90 degrees offset from the pin and the first compression ring and the second compression ring is offset 180 degrees from the pin and then on your oil ring I just have this uh, offset a little bit on both sides as you can see the top ring is there but not lined up with the pin and on the bottom oil ring it's lined up here and again not set with the piston pin because that will affect the oil transfer transfer uh, from the engine. Okay, next step is going to be getting ready to put the cam gear with the timing belt and the pin, retaining pin, of course, which goes back onto here uh, in the place. But first of all, we wanna make sure the piston is at top dead center. So you wanna push the piston down into that slot and then the crankshaft after oiling uh, these different parts on the crankshaft is going to slide into the slot like so and we are also going to make sure that uh, everything is oiled and that we have the thrust washer on top of this as once well. you get the rod cap bolts tightened to nine foot pounds or 108 inch pounds 
uh, you're gonna go ahead and put the flywheel on with that 13 millimeter bolt. What I've done is I've put in the blade, the collar and the blade back on, just not too tight on here to act as a handle. Just be aware that on this rod, you have this little lever here, which kicks up oil uh, from the inside oil pan. You wanna be careful with that because I have broken mine off. And that's why I had to wait another week and a half to put this back together because I had to order a whole new rod to replace this one from that little oil slinger right there. And you're gonna use this as a, uh, basically a handle when torquing down this flywheel nut to 38 foot-pounds. Next is going to be the cam timing alignment. I just set the cam gear in here. That timing belt you're going to basically run through here and you are going to make sure the crankshaft notch is here facing towards you and those little cam gear alignment teeth again one there and one there will be facing towards you once you get the belt on again making sure this is aligned the lower step of the pin is facing you and the higher step is facing away pushing the pin down inside once you get the timing belt back on we're going to go ahead and put that thrust washer back over which also offers protection for the belt and then I use a light coat of ultra black around both sides of the crankcase before reassembling it with those eight nine millimeter bolts. Those are going to get torqued to nine foot pounds, the same as the uh, bolts on the crank rod. Once you have the engine casing back together, you're then going to assemble the governor assembly. That's left this lever here. Held on by this bolt, you're going to make sure that this lever is turned as much clockwise as possible while holding the throttle body wide open here. That's the adjustment. Throttle body wide open. Uh, make sure this is pressed this way. Make sure this adjustment is turned as clockwise as possible. Tighten this bolt to nine foot-pounds. Keeping in mind also this spring and lever assembly, which is mounted to the top portion of the uh, governor lever. And then there's another spring down here, which mounts underneath and mounts to the bottom of the governor assembly, which basically holds it open. Next will be the valve adjustment. Uh, set the motor upright, making sure the crankshaft is set at top dead center. Again, the keyway here. The cam lobe will be directly in the up position. This will either be facing up on the compression stroke or facing down uh, on the exhaust stroke. Uh, another way to check is to make sure that your piston is, uh, you can see that at the top of the piston. The adjustment here on the intake valve next to the carburetor is going to be 15 thousandths and the exhaust adjustment is going to be 20 thousandths. So here we have 15 thousandths clearance between the cam adjusting or the, uh, the valve adjusting screw. Uh, this wrench is a 11 30 seconds and what I do is I'll loosen that up and just usually take a pair of pliers once it's loose to make the adjustment here. You'll thread it down, you'll thread it clockwise to make the spacing smaller and you'll thread it counterclockwise to give it a larger spacing. Next step is go ahead and placing the cover back onto the motor. Uh, I've used the ATV Ultra Black as well. Uh, placing the sealant on the cover and on the engine block itself. Putting it back together with the four bolts and if you can let that sit for 12 hours if you have time that way it'll give it a chance to firm up on the inside of the motor as well 